What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode It Is, episode number 38 returns down the back of our win over Leeds, finally getting a win over one of our bogey teams. Uh, loads to get through in today's episode in three different competitions. Uh, we'll have the Europa League League phase open up, can't wait for this first ever game in the Europa League in the Sade, of course it's which won it, uh, the UEFA Cup that was, uh, over two legs many decades ago. Now we'll have more games in the Premier League as well on the back of the start, four wins in our first five games undefeated only behind the league leaders Manchester United on a goal difference and whenever it's drawn we'll have the Carabao Cup last 16 as well before we get there though you might have just seen something quite interesting indeed because uh, well we know the new manager for England now is Thomas Tuchel but uh, in the save England have given me the job if I want it I mean Maybe not quite the level of Thomas Tuchel, more like Mike Bassett. i got to be honest, I love the offer, but I'm going to turn it down. I don't think I'll do any international management in this save. If I'm not going to do England, I'm not going to do anyone. Right, first game of many today. Let's dive straight into it. It is indeed the Europa League League phase open at our first time playing the competition in the save after last year's Champions League run to the semis. This year, the board have asked us to win it. And Ipswich have won this competition before, back when it was known as the UEFA Cup back in 1981. It's their only major European honour to date. And that's my target this year as well. I believe we're good enough to target winning this and having it back in the cabinet after nearly five decades. Let's start off with the three points on match day one. Braga away in Portugal at their really cool stadium, which I wish was in the game on the group. Oh no, the league phase opener. Come on, Ipswich Town. So for those that have been asking me my opinions on the uh, the appointment, by the way, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a big, big fan. I mean, Thomas Tuchel is, is an elite manager. You know, he's proven this at several different teams, won lots of major honours, including the Champions League with Chelsea, of course, an incredible achievement there. Um, you know, he's an elite manager, a fantastic tactician. Um, I think he's got good player management as well. And the only real thing that I see people questioning is the fact that he's a foreign manager. Now, he's our third foreign manager in history. The other two, uh, the late, great Sven Goran Eriksson, rest in peace, of course, and uh, Fabio Capello. And whilst neither of them may have delivered what we were hoping for as England manager, I've always found this belief that, you know, a manager, an international manager, needs to be of the same nationality as the nation they're managing to be quite outdated. I really don't believe it matters that much, personally. So for me, I think Thomas Tuchel has got all the assets. I think he's got excellent tactical knowledge, which you know was one of Gareth's big criticisms. And um, he's a proven winner. I'm a fan of it. I think it's a really good appointment from the FA. Speaking of Sven Goran Eriksson, um, what a what a lovely gesture it was from uh, from Liverpool to allow him to manage to side in a, uh, a charity match. I think it was like a, a Legends game. Sven was a, a lifelong Liverpool fan. Got most key going. Okay, I'll go to David instead. Or Adley even. Oh, this guy is just too good, man. Honestly, he's too good. But uh, he was a lifelong fan of the club, and I thought it was a great touch from Liverpool after he um, made public his uh, his illness. Um, Liverpool invited him to manage the club for a, for a Legends game, and that to me is what football is all about. You know, it's it's such a great gesture from the Reds, and uh, of course, rest in peace to to Sven, a great manager, and. Um, yeah, a wonderful touch from uh, from Liverpool. But again, that, that that to me is what football is is all about. You know, real community spirit and um, real togetherness, no matter what. You know, every, everyone in football is connected. Everyone in football is uh, is united. When uh, when you learn of um, you know icons of the game going through tough times, illnesses, and and so on, as Washington almost. Got our second goal. One nil up here. And I'd say, looking at the league phase, you know, the teams we've got to face, if we don't get through in the top eight, we've let ourselves down. You know, unlike last year in the CL, getting into the playoffs, th th this has got to be top eight minimum. We, we should go for pole position in the league phase. Well, you know, I have to say, to start this season off, a lot of the games have felt very similar. Unconvincing, but winning. And that is the most important thing. It seems like all of our victories, apart from... I think, actually, all of our victories, apart from the opening day, have been by the same score, like 1-0. But doesn't matter, man. doesn't matter how you get the wins, so long as you do. Starting off the Europa League league phase, completely different to how we began the Champions League last year. A win on match day one. 
So just had to draw for the last 16 to Carabao Cup. That's Brentford away at the GTEC. We'll end on that. But for the following game today, heading into this one, Chelsea at home. Three teams with the same record to start the season off. Four wins and a draw. And we are two of them. The other, Manchester United leading the way on goal difference right now. But if we are to be in a tight race this season, we said it. Wins against division and title rivals are going to be absolutely crucial. So Chelsea at Portman Road following game. Aiming to extend the winning run. Come on, switch down. Can't keep relying on a mean Adley like this, though, man. It's absolutely ridiculous. I wouldn't say we're a one-man team, but we're not far off it. But you just saw their Man City down a goal at home to West Ham. They they have stumbled out of the blocks this season. Only the one win so far. If there was, you know, if there was ever, if there was ever a season, if there was ever a season to end that dominance, it's this year. They have really stumbled out of the blocks this year. You can never rule them off, but it's been a poor start from the dynasty this season. It's not ideal at the moment to know we're so heavily reliant on one forward. Especially when I signed a new striker on deadline day. Never bodes well, does it? But he's just been that good. Holds it up and just couldn't roll it through. And goes down as well. But I think based on the animation, it would just be a bruise. That is my, that is my worst nightmare right now. I mean, Adley going down with a broken toe, for example. I think that would just be a bruise. And I really hope so, because if it's not him getting the goals, it's no one else. As I just couldn't find Garner. Yeah, I'm not too worried about... Oh! That injury, but... I am worried this will be our first loss of the season. Down by a goal. It's just... It is really right now. Like, I hate to say this, but I think, I think we are a one-man team. Honestly, because I just... I can't do anything unless I'm getting the ball to Ali in a dangerous area. The creativity's lacking. The finishing just isn't there. And this will be our first loss of the season, man. Of all the years where Man City have a slight struggle to start the season off, this is not the year... We want to be slipping up in our home games as well. Well, Man City turned around in the end. But the thing is, it's, it's a mental thing as well. Like, it's a mental thing. There's nothing wrong with Georgie, who's just come in. There's nothing wrong with um, with uh, David or Dunlap. And yeah, as you see, there are 5D injuries. I said this in the last episode. You can tell how bad an injury is going to be based on the animation. But it's just, it, it's a mental thing. Like, when you have so much confidence with one player, it can be hard to really have the same belief that anyone else is going to be just as good. Five and six. That's the only game where he didn't score there. I mean, the dude is unreal. But the other fours, I mean, Washington got his two goals in the Carabao Cup, but I just don't have any kind of faith unless it's a mean Adley. But he'll be out for our following game. Yep, next up, heading into this one, first Europa League game at home, and it is the Belgian side, USG, coming to Portland Road. Should be able to bounce back here. And like I said, in our first season in the Europa League, we got to finish top eight. Surely, automatic qualification. Let's start off with back-to-back -back wins in the Europa League. Go on, switch down. Also, I'm sorry if my audio sounds a bit flat at the moment. I have to say, struggling a little bit with the old, uh, the old black dog. It's not been, uh, it's not been easy. But that's uh, just a, uh, a lifelong kind of thing. I just need to uh, go through from time to time, you know. But it'll be all right. It'll be okay. Most important thing: keep working hard, be consistent. Try and find joy in the little things and so on and so forth. And I'll tell you what, this will give me some joy as well. No, save for the rebound turned in. I need to get Georgie his first goal quickly, man. But it is now free for the season for our number nine, David Washington. And we discussed this in the last episode as well. Rebound goals are incredibly common in this year's FC. I'm noticing it so much more than previous versions. Goalkeepers parry shots back into open play a lot. So if you've had a shot on target, it's not been the most accurate, not been the most powerful. Be alert, man. Don't take your fingers off that controller and don't lose concentration because you might get a chance as soon as that ball gets back into open play. David capitalizes. It was switching from free kick right on the edge. 15 minutes in, the chance to go two goals up here. Gibbs White standing over it. He scored two in the save so far. Davis scored an absolute belter last year. And as for Morgan. Oh, off the bar and then Wharton took him the rebound. What did we just say? Well, this wasn't a keeper fumble, but the tap in for the easiest goal of his career and his first free is as well. So close to my third free kick goal to save though, man. Gibbs White off the bar, off the keeper. And then a tap in on the rebound. I want another free kicker. I said I'm getting better, and I am. May not have scored, but still caused a goal from it. 
Come on, second half underway. Tune it up. These points surely in the bag. Good bounce back win here. But I really want to get Georgie a goal, man. Still waiting for his first since coming in. I'm glad that Washington's now got three for the season. But, yeah, I, re I really want to get the Georgian his, uh, his first for the club. And come with me, come with me, come with me. Composure. Finish. Goal. Right on cue. There we go. There we go. Because you, you never want to leave it too long, man. That's the thing. When you're waiting to scratch for the first time, you want to get it as quickly as possible. Because it's a psychological hurdle. I never forget Peter Crouch talking about this. When he joined Liverpool, and we're going back a long time ago now, it's well documented. He went, I think it was 16 or 17 games without a goal. And he would talk about it. I heard it on a podcast. He said, like, after every game, he kept thinking, is it ever going to come? Am I ever going to get that first one? But when he got one, and he ended up scoring two in the same game, his career kind of kick-started from there, his Liverpool career I should say, kind of kick-started from there and he started to score on a more regular basis. It's the first one, it's it's always the hardest to get, but once you've got it, it's a real psychological weight lifted off your shoulders. Yeah, Doxy Boy's depression might be playing up a little bit and when you've had a setback it can often make things feel even worse. Like that loss there against Chelsea, but how do you respond? Well, you just pick yourself up, you move straight on, and you just put the work in. Exactly what we did. 3-0 win, back-to-back -back in the Europa League. Probably the best performance of the season so far. And, thank goodness, Georgie has his first goal after several games. Perfect start for the Tractor Boys, two wins from two. And just before that tricky test away on the South Coast against Brian, first of the month. And you might have noticed this year, I'm not doing any youth scouting. And I, I do this every now and then in an RTG. I'll take what you call a gap year off of scouting. And the reason being is because the academy right now is just too full. So if we were to pick up a player from the scouting, I'd have to release someone. But at the moment, I don't want to release anyone. All of my youth players look really, really good. And the best, of course, the highest rated with the highest potential, Riley Stokes as well. So yeah, I, I think if you're doing an RTG, sometimes it's good to have just one year out of the save off of scouting. And it's a way to sort of clear the backlog, if you will. So during the season, you can give out some pro deals. Riley, for example, is going to get one in January and they'll loan him out for the rest of the season. His physicals are just 17. are absolutely brilliant despite the lack of height. But um, yeah, so for this year, the reason why I'm doing no scouting is because the academy's full. So we're having a gap year so we can clear out the academy, give some pro deals in January, maybe release one or two players and then we'll have more space in the following year. Right, yeah, following game, heading into this one away on the South Coast against Brighton. Very tough test here with both teams off to decent starts this season. But on the back of our first loss of the campaign. Chelsea now the only undefeated side in the division. Man City has stumbled out the blocks, so if we are to be the team that dethroned them after 10 titles in 11 years, well, we said it, these are the games we can't afford to slip up in. Brighton away. Come on, it's which time. I've been trying to work harder on uh, expressing gratitude um, because I, I know as a perfectionist as I am, I always look for the fault in everything. I always find fault with myself in everything, <laughs> you know, and um, I've been trying to work on, you know, expressing gratitude and, and finding reasons to be thankful more, you know, so I pray at the end of every day now before I go to bed, um, you know, I look for reasons to be to be positive and grateful for the day I've had, but also the, the life I'm living as well, and there are many, many reasons, and the positives far outweigh the negatives, even if my mind only wants to focus on the negatives due to the perfectionist nature I've got. Um, but I think I think it, it has been helping. You know, it definitely has been helping. I'm nowhere near as, uh, as, as bad as I used to be when it comes down to succumbing to my depressive thoughts and my negative moods. I definitely have gotten better. And again, expressing the gratitude and finding reasons to be thankful has definitely, definitely helped as well. I know so many of you guys have problems with depression as well, and that's def definitely one thing I do encourage. I know it's easy to feel negative and to be sucked into that trap of believing that everything is negative, but there are there are reasons to be thankful. There are reasons to be positive, even during the darkest days. That's, that's what I try and work on a lot more now. Obviously, one thing I'm so grateful for is uh, still... Oh! That's going to be a second booking. That's a very quick second booking. He literally just picked up one a moment ago. And that's going to be a second yellow. Two quick yellow cards. The red card comes out straight away. But it is actually for a second yellow card. And that is two really quick bookings in the space of about 30 seconds. And Brighton are down to 10 men. I was going to say, one thing I, one thing I still am so grateful for is being able to do this. This is a dream for me. And to still be able to do it day after day. I can't do it as much as I want to anymore. 
welcome to adulthood, <laughs> where the responsibilities grow, but, um, but still to be able to do this every day and have the audience I've got, that's something I'll always be so thankful for, and I hope it, um, it always comes across in my videos as I, I want it to, as Moses is denied. Still 0-0, but uh, we, we should definitely get some goals here now. Man, the conditions have been absolutely infuriating to play, and I just haven't been able to create any chances. Pass is going astray. And openings far and few between. I just, I can't, hold on. Oh, who else? Who else? Come on! Left it late, but he's came in clutch. Who else but Ipswich's hero, Amin Adley, once again, to the rescue. He is big time. Absolutely big time. It's yours, mate, all day. Oh, no, no, but the pass is poor. Oh, my word. You, you just, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me concentrate on him. Hold on. Yep, Davis winning, mate, and it, uh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> the sheer panic, honestly, man. <laughs> it's just the way it goes now. Liam Delap for his first of the season wraps it up off the bench, and if Switch Town will get the win. <laughs> The sheer panic, honestly. It's, I tell you, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Last year's FC was the most difficult version of the franchise I had ever played. And this is coming come from someone that played and owned every version since 99. And had also played Road to the World Cup in 98. This year, it's even tougher. The game gets even harder and the conditions play a huge part. Tonight, they were tough to play in. But with the man advantage, we made it pay late. Adley with another, the laps first of the season, Tractor Boys with a huge three points away at Brighton, back to winning ways in the league, come on. A massive win to go into the international break, but now on the end of it, returning here with Spurs away, a really tough one. Three teams off the great starts, capitalising on Man City's poor, stumbling performance out of the blocks, but Chelsea, the only undefeated side, leading the way by a point. If we are to keep pace with Maresca's side, wins in these games against traditional top six sides, especially away, will be worth their weight in gold dust. Next up, Spurs in North London. Come on, let's reach time. So my first battle with Bobby, otherwise known as Endrick. <laughs> really excited for this one, I must say. I haven't, haven't seen him in, uh, in this year's FC yet, so this should be a lot of fun. Um, again, didn't, didn't feature for Real Madrid last season, so I don't know who he played for before Spurs in this save. That's, again, one of those things I really wish you could track. He wasn't at Real Madrid last season, so... Yeah, I'd love to know who he, uh, who he moved on from first before coming to, uh, to Spurs. As Delap almost got his second in two and Spurs will get it away. But uh, excited for it, man. What a wonder kid he is. And uh, now it's Spurs. Yeah, I think he's kind of running with the joke now, Endrick. You know, being called Bobby by his Real Madrid teammates. For those that don't understand the reference, basically, Endrick, teenage Brazilian, listed Bobby Charlton. The great Bobby Charlton is, uh, is one of his childhood uh, heroes. And everyone was like... How exactly? Like, we're talking about a player from not even just a couple of decades ago, but several decades ago. Here in the 1966 England World Cup win, of course. And I think I think the answer was that he used him in FIFA. He used one of his, like, ultimate team cards in FIFA. And that's how he became a fan of Bobby Charlton. But um, still a bit strange, to say the very least, you know. As Adam Wharton tries his luck, and it'll deflect back to Morgan. I, I'm not necessarily saying I don't buy the story, but I do wonder if it, if Hendrick's PR team might have had a bit so, bit of something to do with listing Charlton as a hero of his to try and appeal to his uh, his British fans. Uh, I guess we'll never know the real story. Anyway, Venom with a good save there, still tied at nil-nil. Seven to go before the break. Oh, we almost got the opener through you know who Vicario with another save on Adley, still nil-nil on top in this first half. All that's missing so far is the breakthrough. Go on, go on, so I'll have a dig, son. Shot blocked. And the lap easily saved. Thing is, as far-fetched as it is for uh, for Endrick, you know, to to have been a fan of, of Bobby Charlton's, um, 
I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that someone's fallen in love with someone because of, uh, you know, uh, the, their usage of them in a video game. For me, for example, I'm always going to look out for the careers of Mbai Niang and Brian Carrasco now, you know, of course, due to my influence with them using career mode. And when I was younger as well, I, um, I had a football manager, say, with Manchester United, and I signed Ava Benega, and he became, like, one of my one of my star players in the save, you know, and I ended up taking him to Barcelona after I moved on. So he, he became someone I'd look out for, you know, so it wouldn't be the first time someone's become a fan of someone just because of their video game usage. But um, again, it's just, it's just, it is still a bit strange to say the very least. Anyway, half an hour to go, still tied at nil-nil. Being a better team out there. And oh, that should have been a deserved opener too. Well, you can file that game under missed opportunities because I should have had an extra two points on the board, man. Kept Endrick quiet all game long. Gonzalo and Onana didn't give him a sniff, but Vicario making a couple of good saves and I couldn't find that breakthrough. Common problem for me in FC, man. I do get chances. I'm just really struggling with the finishing. But with Chelsea having their first loss of the season against Emirates Villa, it means now, look at the table, eight games in, three teams with the same records only separated on goal difference. West Ham themselves only two behind, and Arsenal, Wolves and Man City now getting back into the race, four points behind us. It's a very open start to this year's Premier League anyone's guess as to who finishes on top. Right, heading into the following game, let's do two or three more. Uh, next up, Stad Rene in the Europa League, going into this morning for our third straight win to maintain our 100% start to the European campaign. Stad Rene in East Anglia, come on, it's which time. Trying a lot of different combinations with my front four at the moment. Haven't got a consistent uh, lineup in the attack yet. Giving everyone a go, trying different combinations, different partnerships, see what works best as Hutchinson shot the flex behind for a corner. I mean, Adley's a guaranteed starter, but the other three places, honestly, they're completely up for grabs. Delap, David, Georgie, Hassan, Mudrick, Koli Osho's injured right now, but as, I mean, it, it, literally, no one is safe in this team apart from this man. <laughs> Quite literally. I never like to say that anyone is indispensable at a club and that no one is bigger than a club. If I was going to make an exception, I would for this guy, man. <laughs> He's literally unplayable on his day. Oh, yeah, no one's bigger than the club here at Ipswich Town, except for maybe Amin Adley, man. <laughs> Honestly, that's a class finish from Callum Muendo there, beating the oncoming Balker and beating him to the back of the net as well. 1 1, staggering there with a leveller. And like, like I said, man, I, I, still, I still think we should be able to qualify through this group as automatically qualifying, but. I don't want to slip up early doors, man. Well, certainly not the worst result in the world, but it is now back-to-back -back draws and only two wins in our last five in all competitions. And again, when you've got grand ambitions, a run like that doesn't sound disastrous, but the best don't allow those sort of runs to spiral out of control. I'm not going to read too much into that. I mean, three games in, seven points taken from nine in the Europa League league phase. I'm still confident of qualification, but yeah, you don't want to allow this mini run to become anything too disastrous. Because that's the thing, form is across all competitions, whether it's league, cup or Europe, they all still contribute towards your form. So when you have had a slip up, you've got to put it right in the next game. We failed to do that. So now after back-to-back -back games, we've had a win and two draws in a row, we've got to return to winning ways here. Otherwise, the form book could really start to play havoc with our confidence. Following game, tough one though, back in the Premier League at Portman Road, Aston Villa coming to East Anglia. To be fair, I've got a decent record against them, but if we are to keep pace with the front runners, Manchester United, who have started off with the same record as us, we've got to win our home games. Next up, Villa. Go on and switch town. Yeah, that's the thing. I know it sounds completely obvious, but it's it's true. If you have a slip up, that's okay. Like we're all going to have slip ups from time to time. You know, that's part of sport. It's part of life. But it's it's when it becomes a habit. It's when it becomes regular. Once every now and then. That's fine. That's all right. If you put it right, that's okay. But if you allow it to become oh, consistent slip-ups, game after game, that, that can be the difference between silverware and failure come the end of a season. You know, you look back on a run of like two or three draws in a row and think if we would have won just one of those games, maybe we would have won the title. Man, I hate playing in these conditions, man. Honestly, I'd rather play in the snow than these soggy, wet turfs where the ball just hangs up, you know, 
it's it's so hard to create chances and pass the ball around and play good football. It's awful. And I, I know if I want to, I can turn it off, but I don't want to because it's it's part of real football. It's part of real sport. Oh, it's a mean. Should have scored in the opener. Of all the players that could have fallen to, that was the one we wanted, man. It's just, it's so hard to play in these conditions, but it's a great challenge, you know. Never before has the weather been so impactful on gameplay. It's brilliant from EA. It's tough, but it's brilliant. Georgie, look at the space. Have a dig, son. Shot blocked. He'll get another go. Also blocked. Come on. Just had to concentrate there. Sorry, guys. Sometimes, sometimes you hear me go quiet, and it's when I'm just concentrating with all my mind. I'm not great at multitasking. I'm not great at doing the commentary and the gameplay together. So sometimes when I really need to focus, yeah, forgive me for going a little bit silent. Just need to recycle the possession, find an opening. It's a great turn by Hassan. The ball's just as nice. And there is who else but Amin Adley. Ain't going to miss twice. It was switching from most of our wins this season have been by this scoreline unconvincing performances oh see that ball stop on the turf there any other condition and that ball carries straight through to Balkan but instead that allowed Villa to have that chance there but as Davis's pass is also cut out if you just got to grind out one nils all the way to silverware I won't mind one bit seven to play almost there just got to hang on here and grind it out. We shall. Yeah, we are a low scoring, solid defense kind of team. But if 1 0 is get us all the way to the title, no one is going to complain. We keep pace with Manchester United for now. Our return to winning ways after none in two. Let's do one more. Carry up last 16 away against Brentford and we'll end on that. Yeah, we'll close the episode out on this. A repeat of the opening day fixture in the Premier League. Or we won 3 1 away at the G Tech. But this, the Carabao Cup last 16. We have never got to the semi-finals of any domestic competition so far. It's amazing to think our best knockout run, if you will, came in the Champions League last 16. But I have to say, I think it's a genuine shot of domestic silverware this season. And the Carabao Cup, whilst it's not a priority of ours, and we will feel the backup side, is still definitely a winnable competition. Regardless, 11 changes, or no, 10 changes. I'll still have Balker between the sticks, but the old outfield changing here. Brentford away in West London. Come on, let's reach down. Yeah, this is what I meant about not necessarily needing a backup goalkeeper a lot of the time in career mode. It's like they, they, they're, never, they're never too tired to play back-to-backs, you know. They're never going to lose energy to, uh, to need, need a rest, if you will. And even if they're not 100% fitness on a very rare occasion, it's not going to have that much of an impact on their gameplay either. So, yeah, you don't, you don't need to worry about spending on a... Uh, on a good backup goalkeeper, if you don't want to. I like to, as Delap almost scores the opener. But uh, you, don't, you don't have to if you don't want to. Borger, for me, could play every single game with no problem at all. It basically just comes down to personal preference, you know. And whether you want to add in an element of realism to the game as well. Whether you want to challenge yourself a little bit. Or, oh, what a finish that is. Or if you just feel... It's best to be safe rather than sorry. Not much you can do about that one, though. Class finished out of the near post by Garassi and Brentford in front. W it would be nice to go all the way in this competition, but again, we're not counting towards the board objectives. And, of course, the, the need to win the Europa League in the board objective and the title as well. Yeah, I'm not going to mind if we do go out. Instant response, though. 1-1. One, one. Oh, come on, don't, don't go behind again before the break. Diaz onside. Oh, so cool. So, so cool. With a cheeky little cutback to Brian and Buemo. Man, this game's being played at 100 miles an hour. 2-1, Brentford back in front. But that, that cutback, this is what's made the AI so difficult to play against. Their intelligence now is so much better. They would never have done that a few years ago. They would never have waited for a supporting run to slip it across. They would have just belted it as hard as they could and hope for the best against the oncoming goalkeeper but now if you bring your goalkeeper out you are really dicing with danger they've got the awareness to sweat it across it's been a tough old run from Ipswich Town man it's going to be just one win in four unless oh finished first time the lap 
13 to go. Looks like they're going to spot kicks. Yep, pens it is to see who makes the quarters of the category. That was a great game to be fair, man. Seriously. I wouldn't mind too much if you got on the spot kicks, but Balker between the sticks for them. Last two penalty shootouts we've been involved in, we won them both. Marshine, can you do it three times in a row and send us through to the quarters? And is Doxy Boy's luck changing in a penalty shootout? Let's find out. Yep, notoriously terrible record at penalty shootout victories. But, hey, listen, we've won back-to-back. -back. Why not three straight? I want, I want Balker to take one as well, man. I really do. Why not? You know, it's the Carabao Cup, seriously. I'm having a number five as well. And we'll see if Marshine can lead us to another penalty shootout victory. Oh, my goodness. Okay, hold on. We're off the mark. Marcin Bulka is a penalty-saving king. Brian and Blamo sends him the wrong way that time, though. And Brentford are back on level terms. We can still have the advantage if James Garner converts his from 12 yards, which he does. Okay, next man up. Sends Bulka the wrong way, and it is 2-2. Two, two, as Amari will take the next. Trying to keep Valdemarsen guessing here. Going to the top right, and he scores. And Brentford really... Need a stop. Luis Diaz also scores. So, Borges started off with one. Hasn't said any in the last three, though. And now, Liam Delap. And again, with Valder Marston, I'm just keeping him guessing, man. Going to that top right. Sends him the wrong way. And Ipswich are on the brink of three straight penalty shootout victories. Not quite of the same importance as the Champions League last 16 and quarters last year. But as Thierry Small must score, he does. Still, it will not matter if Marshine can bang one in. Just, I want to chip it. I want to chip Should I do it? I mean, what? Come on, it's the Carabao Cup. No one really cares that much. Marshine Walker. Oh, no! <laughs> Carvalho <Valley> scores. <laughs> You know it's bad when the keeper can hold on to a penalty. Mumba to send us through. Go on, Mumba. I'll back him every day, to be fair. Mumba against Valdemarsson. Scores. <laughs> it's not going to matter. Oh, wait. No, that wasn't our winning one. What? I thought that was... Hold on. I thought that was... What? Wasn't that our one to win it? Was it? How has it changed over? I thought that was our one to win it. No, I, I, I guess not. I guess not. I thought it was, but it's not. Flynn Downs to take the next... Really doesn't matter if we go out or not, to be fair. But he's kept us alive for now. <laughs> I got confused there. Coyote next man up. And straight down the middle. And it continues. Well, Bulka saved the first. Hasn't saved any more since then. And Ben Johnson, I've got to say, I don't know why, but I don't feel confident with the former iron. Ben Johnson must score to keep us in the shootout for now. And does. Tyler Kara next man up. And... Wow, I have absolutely jinxed it with Marcin Bulka. I mean, literally saved every single... Uh, sorry, uh, saved one and hasn't saved any since then. Jacob Greaves, next man up. I fancy Jacob Greaves, to be fair, against Valdemarsson. And he sends him the wrong way. This is, this is ludicrous, man. Mads Roroslav. Has it saved by Bulka who redeems himself? I love the little pat on the chest and say, despite me missing that pen, I know I'm still going to make a save at some point. And Patterson could send us through. Let's go top right here with Nathan. And the ex-Evertonian to put us in the quarters. Doesn't. Oh, my word. Seriously. Valdemarsson. He scores his. And it continues. This is absolutely ludicrous, man. Longest penalty shootout I think I've ever been involved in here. Jake O'Brien to take the next. Big Jake, not overly confident. But we're going round again. We're Rassi. Next man up. Scores. This is this is ridiculous. Settle in because we are in for possibly the long... Well, this has got to be now. I don't think I've ever had a penalty shootout where it's gone round again. So this is definitely the longest shootout I've ever been involved in. David Washington has a lot of power on that. But he still hits it in top bins. This is getting a bit ridiculous now. Brian and Buemo scores. James Garner to take the next. Honestly, I feel like missing on purpose. Because otherwise, we are going to be here all night. This is absolutely crazy. As the ex-Evertonian, not the best penalty, I think, there. And nope, it is indeed saved. And that will do it. Valdemarsen, the hero. Brentford through. Longest penalty shooter I've ever been involved in. And after winning back-to-back, -back, we lose this one. 
Honestly, not one bit fussed though. Send us out. And I'll do it for today's episode, guys. So big thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll return in the next one with match days four and five in the Europa League league phase. More games in the Premier League. Aim to keep pace with league leaders, Manchester United. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.